Yeah, I really see trends in where people go and, and fix and leave their stuff. You know, sometimes they'll be, you know, I'll come here for two or three weeks and there'll be, you know, 10, 20 rakes laying out here or on the other side or, you know, in various spots. And then it just disappears, you know, it's like the person goes, moves on or, or uh, you know, gets busted or something. And, and uh, then, you know, it'll go like six months and then back again, it'll be the same kind of, same kind of thing here again. two days a week right now um, and I work morning so I come in here I'm 10 to 7, 5 to 7 and uh, we get all our gear together, the backpacks, the buckets and, and pluckers and the bins for the needles and we head out and we walk for two hours doing in interactions and doing rig digging and come back to the office here and basically go our separate ways from there. We only got two hours to do this so we don't abide by the, 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 the crosswalks or anything. We, we got to cover as much ground as we can in two hours in the morning. So like I, I, I would say to a, a police officer handing me a ticket, I'll see you in court. We do our outreach uh, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Doing our outreach, not only do we do uh, needle ex mobile needle exchange, we uh, collect discarded needles from back alleyways and street corners and playgrounds and schoolyards and sidewalks and you name it, we'll find it. When, when we uh, collect them, it ends up looking like this and within uh, one month we'll collect four five gallon buckets full of needles off of Victoria streets. Hey Dave, you missed one. Oh, I, did. I, I got involved about a year ago in the rig dig. I'm a, a recovering addict and, and I know I left my share, fair share of needles out on the street. For me, it's, it was a, kind of a way of not only giving back, but you know, making uh, some positive change in, in, in a, a serious problem I see here in Victoria. Doing the rig dig is really good. I mean, it gets me involved with uh, a lot of people that you know I, I wouldn't be able to interact with otherwise. I mean, I work with other agencies and I go to school, and there's there's no substitute for that you know that street level interaction. It's it's you know many fold the the reason why I do the rig dig. Sure, there's a there's a slight monetary uh, stipend for doing it. But it's certainly not the reason why I get out of bed to come here. We put the location, how many we pick up, how many are handed in, how many uh, needle packs we hand out, and they're in bundles of 10 with the alcohol wipes. And then we offer people uh, water, the sterile water packs. And we count the number of interactions. Have I got you? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, no problem. You sure you got me? A lot of it is just basic needs. Um, not just the, the needle exchange aspect of it, um, but, you know, just just talking with people kind of about, you know, are they safe? How are they, how are they feeling? Where, you know, do you... Just asking them how they're doing, I mean, and, and, and you know, caring about what they, how they, how they're feeling, and what's going on with them, um, you know, helps them just by asking them the questions. I mean, it just sometimes someone just asking you how you're doing and really caring about the response can, you know, make your day worth, you know, I don't know, just make you feel a little better about yourself. Solid came together in 2003, and in 2007. Solid received funding from VHA to provide comprehensive needle exchange services. So uh, comprehensive needle exchange services includes the distribution and the recovery of syringes and also the um, supports that go along with that. So peer, uh, as Solid is a 
peer-based, completely peer-based organization. Um, it's peer support, um, peer distribution, completely peer run. Does uh, providing people with clean syringes and uh, you know harm reduction supplies increase drug use? And uh, no, <laughs> people, as we know, people are going to are doing drugs, and people are doing drugs for various hosts of reasons. Whether it's um, you know pain management, and that pain management can be physical, uh, mental, emotional. Uh, you know whether it's just trying to cope with being on the street or whatever the situation is, people are doing drugs for various reasons. And just because the equipment is not there is not going to stop people from doing drugs. It just makes it safer for people. This one contains, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And a bundle of 10, 20. So there's 28 right there, uh, and a penny for me. A lot of times that's how we find the needles in the garbage cans, because somebody has discarded a bag full of junk out of their knapsack, and they'll put their, their, their waste in there, plus they'll throw a bunch of needles in. Instead of... Uh, bothering to use the uh, uh, the needle boxes that are located around town or turn them into us. They just want to get rid of them. That's why Victoria needs a, uh, a fixed needle exchange site slash consumption site so they can do their dope in, at, at, a, at a location where there's a nurse and supervision and and uh, they, they, they're not, they, they got a place to, to discard the needle and, and they're not throwing them out on the streets. There's no uh, fixed needle exchange site in Victoria and other than uh, VARCs and the ABI outreach teams, the uh, solid outreach team, the three of us are basically the only supply for people using illicit drugs to acquire their, their clean uh, syringes from. We're the ones that are out there first thing in the morning. And I like that idea because it cleans up the streets. I saw the need for the streets to be cleaned up. That's why I started doing the, the uh, outreach rig dig. Rig dig. I work with an organization called Harm Reduction Victoria um, that basically was started in, in 2008 just after the closure of the needle exchange uh, and we um, since then have been working really hard on this and one of the things that we have developed is the Victoria Harm Reduction Resource Centre Society and the idea behind that is to uh, move forward with opening a supervised consumption service eventually, uh, but by starting to just open a harm reduction resource center for folks here. It's a long process to ensure that it's actually done right and that it's peer run and stuff, but no one else is doing it, so we're going to do it. The city of Victoria talks harm reduction, but their entire focus, their language, the narrative behind their language is all abstinence-based. I mean, you don't see them actually putting their money where their mouth is. And, you know, the fact that they actually know that people are dying because of the lack of services here in Victoria. They know that the money that they could vote into, into being there for services like a uh, safe injection site, needle exchange, um, they know this. I mean, it almost makes them culpable for the deaths that are happening on the streets down here in Victoria.